welcome once again. It's always good to have you around. Thank you. It's Thank a pleasure you to be much. here. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I know you're not quite, um, you're quite familiar with this and um, this is not the first of the series. So you've been like a part of a family on the con um, con innovation series and over the past 11 years, um, you've been with us, um, we, we've been with Dr. Sanjiro Lubodi mm -hmm. on this. And um, so it's good again to have you on board. I'm very board. pleased to be here and congratulations for the amount of work I know it takes uh, to do these programs. It's very important, I think, in every profession and every, um, to create a platform uh, to think, to, to, to pursue, uh, you know, exchanges that allow the expansion of knowledge. Yes, 11 years is no joke. So thank you again. I will say, um, and then one good thing about the platform is that um, it keep over the years, you know, expanding the mind of the people. I mean, offering solutions and helping individuals improve better. Um, so to this year's um, theme of the conference, basically this year, we're thinking the future of Africa um, when it comes to creativity and innovation. And, um, and then we'll be looking at how um, Artificial intelligence has been able to help out in reshaping or shaping for the future. So the theme for this year is African creativity industry in the era of AI. Um, I know for it, a lot of us who believe that ideas rule the world and um, this we've come to see play out and ideas play the frontier of any creative, you know, um, challenge or any creative in any creative sector. Um, and I mean, it's been trending recently with, I mean, with the invention of AI, which will keep innovating and we keep, you know, getting better at doing things. One of the key prominent things with AI is the fact that people see AI as a big deal and the next big thing that's prong on all of us, all of a sudden. What's your reaction to this? Well, I think the immersive technologies, uh, as we call them, is a response, is a response to, uh, what clearly is, is uh, the expansion of what you will call the creative economies across the world. Across the world, um, we're beginning to move from, you know, uh, an industrial based uh, production system to a production system that is, uh, you know, creative brand led. And, and I think, Given that in the last 20 years, we have all this empowerment through, uh, 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 through uh, technology um, to expand the spaces of idea exchanges, to expand the spaces of how um, we even, you know, uh, reshape ideas and taking those, those capacities into the production systems. Uh, and then of course, with the empowerment that we now have with the internet, we had the imagination, the distribution, the monetization, and the archiving of anything can be almost, you know, uh, part of a single person economy. It's no surprise that, you know, the next step will be the immersive technologies. It's just an expansion. So for me, there is nothing um, grand about these new technologies. <laughs> what they are actually is, is the next step. And the next step to, you know, shall I say, uh, providing a, a bigger, stronger way of gathering algorithms and making them more efficient. So artificial intelligence, um, um, augmented reality, uh, all these immersive technologies are actually a response to how far we have come. And for me, I'm very excited. It's, it's, it's very exciting, especially um, for what I would describe as, you know, disadvantaged, uh, a disadvantaged continent like Africa, um, where the only power that would allow us to compete going forward economically um, is our soft power. The only thing that is unique about, about us. us 
is, is our cultural power, our storytelling capacities, our capacity to innovate and create. Um, those are the very things that, you know, these immersive technologies are going to empower. And they're going to empower it at minimum cost. They're going to make our systems more efficient. Uh, but we have to understand um, not just, you know, what they represent, but how to use them. Uh, we still sit in the driver's seat. <laughs> of Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That seems pretty loaded um, with all that you said. Um, one key thing for me is you talked about empowerment and you talked about the storytelling. Mm -hmm. I'll take you up on the storytelling. Um, so in this era of AI and all of those, and then within the sector that you play, which is the film um, and television sector, right? Um, how do you think AI is going to play out? Or what do you foresee in your storytelling and your approach to storytelling? Well, the, the first thing I'd like to say is the storytelling has become um, the driver of every profession. It, it's in this new That's economy. Content. Because today, um, almost every profession has to have an imagination engineering system. Um, if you're a medical doctor, you have to be able to work with the screen, to be able to use the, you know, the camera to go even within um, the patient. Now surgeries are done, you know, like a live television event where you can actually have a recording. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the systems that have been created just even for diagnosis tells you that whether you're in medicine, engineering or whatever, you've got to be able to understand the vital importance and centrality of storytelling. And for me, that's what artificial intelligence um, um, can empower in a very powerful way. Um, artificial intelligence will not help you tell a story will make the process of storytelling more efficient. efficient. Um, what does it work with? It, it simply works with what is known. Algorithms. It, it's a gathering at a faster speed, speed than the human mind can of all the resources and, and you know, spaces and samples and references of what you put as the prompt. Mm. So, it is what you put in the prompt that oh, determines yeah. the quality of what, of what AI is able to give to you. But it is the expansion of that capacity that makes it exciting. Because AI will think faster than you can to process what you're trying to create. But you have to be trying to create something. So the whole imagination process is still the same. You still have to be a storyteller, and you still have to have a premise, uh, a basic synopsis of what you're trying to do, a, a treatment of what your story is, the world of your story. You still have to have a, a, a character design capacities. You still have to be able to decide what the conflict is, what the inciting incident is, and how you resolve mm -hmm. this. But the greatest part of it is every story really aligns on the axis of, of choice. choice. Um, regardless of what the conflict is, the reason we follow any story, whether it's, it's written as a novel, as a film, as a m piece of music, is to align our ethical compass with that of a character. It's all about how we relate back to the world. That's, right. That's what storytelling is. And our world view is, is, you know, the prism through which those decisions and those choices are made. And once, you know, that is part of the prompt, the physical process of writing a script is demystified. And that's what AI does. Now, the question is, will that make jobs and, and professionals redundant? No. no. It would ask them to redirect their relevance to that ecosystem. And that's what I think is exciting. So if you are a storyteller, if you are a producer, if you are a cameraman, um, it's taken away from you many things that you could, you could call mundane. mundane. So the expertise in the mundane will diminish. Yeah. 
and we will begin to AI challenges us to bring function to form. <laughs> and you know, we've lived in a world now that I think, you know, sometimes people think the form is the function. And and it's important that, you know, um, the capacities that these immersive technologies bring, uh, we understand that they actually enrich and empower. The second thing is because they are immersive, it's going to reshape how interactive storytelling can get. Mm -hmm. uh, I truly believe that in another five years, you'll be able to be watching a film, get up and enter the, the, the world of that film um, and interact with the character with the that you like. It's going to happen. It's already happening now that you can, against a green screen, you know, put up, um, you know, uh, 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 test you. Yeah, you can put up wires uh, and, 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 and sensors on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a on a robot and, and, and create a, an entirely automated fight scene that will be precise, exact to the story. Sorry. The things that a human um, stuntman may not be able to do. And when the robot is done, you'll be able to export into a, a, a system that will take the body of the actor that you wish and simply wrap it around that. It. Because I was going to come to that, you know, um, it got a little bit scary when you started out to say, oh, yeah, I can do all of those. And then you can bring in the robot to, you know, interpret the storyline and be able to tell the story. Mm -hmm. um, for me, is how do you bring the historical and the cultural values merging with the use of AI in this new era. So how do you intend to ensure that you bring in the historical values? Um, in terms of what I keep calling imagination engineering, with all the tools that makes it original. And that means the context, the world, the, the sounds of the time, the spaces, the clothing, the food, the, the culture. And that culture will include languages. And today I tell young filmmakers, do you understand why the Oscars will say, for you to qualify for the international, you have to have 70% of your, of your local, local language. languages. It's actually because UNESCO has been saying for the last 10 years that given how technology is pervasive, the, the one thing that is in the gravest danger are cultures. Cultures are in decline. Languages are disappearing. Okay. Clothing are becoming, you know, there is appropriation of, of cultural that. symbols. And sometimes the films themselves become the spaces where this appropriation is beginning to redefine understanding and redefine identity. Mm. For me, for instance, and this is personal, my uncle is, is um, Chief Dio Fagua. Yeah. And, and, and he's one of the early first authors of, of novels in Yoruba language. language. But he wrote this, these novels, creating amazing characters in, in, the, you know, in the forest of a thousand demons. It's been impossible to imagine how to translate that to film. And mm. I've always wanted to do that. Okay. But today, the immersive technologies are going to make that not Easy. so hard. And it's... They're going to make that not so expensive, but they're also going to be able to make that such that I'm able to spread this oh, story good. across very different expressions. Okay. We'll be able to maybe do a park, you know, in, 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 we'll be able to do an immersive park like you have with, uh, you know, uh, parks like that in other places. places. We'll be able to create, you know, a, 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 a capsule of these stories in, in different forms. We'll be able to do game with them. We'll be able to turn them into educational tools um, for Africa's children. Uh, one of the things that I think we've not actually realized is the fact that a lot of our young kids... Um, children's programming is, is practically missing in our language, in our culture, in our, our so A lot of the children across many cultures in Africa are basically uh, trained in their first collision with, 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 with the world um, in the language and culture of those making that content. 
And that was always because we couldn't afford to make the technology for making those important cultural work. content was not there. Now AI will empower us, not just to do it, but also to maybe reimagine those ones that the kids are watching now. AI will be able to render them in our language. We'll be able to cre recreate them with our culture, with our own algorithms and our own touch points of music and fashion. And so for me, it's a very exciting um, reality, but we've got to learn uh, that every technology is neutral. It is what use you put, put into, into it that determines what it is. Somebody created the technology that resulted in, into that. in the atom bomb, and somebody created <clears throat> technology that's resulting into the AI. Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, for me, one of the key things um, that you've been able to touch on, which I think is really a problem for a lot of people when people say, hey, AI, AI, the fuel AI is coming to erode, and this technology has come to erode people of mana where loss of jobs, fear of creation and all that. But I like the fact that um, you did mention and talked, touched on the algorithm and touched on the fact that people still need to feed in. So it's, you still have the opportunity to own the content. So this is not a total way of, it just shows that people just need to be more creative and then give more expression and own the content because AI will just help fast track the process, but the content is still ownable to us. I think that is one area I think I would like for you to expand more because a lot of people have this fear. So time in, time out, you hear people talk about AI and the fear around it. Like, no, this is a technology we have to reject. Talk about um, taking ownership. Like, look, this person is just going to take this system has come to bear and it's going to take ownership. Now I don't have right to my content. So how do I do it? If you need to do anything now, just ask AI. AI tells you, mm. I need to write a story. I need to make a film, like you refer to your uncle's book. Um, AI will just, just mention it to AI, and AI gives you options, several options that you could play with. But people don't understand that even as much as AI gives this information, you still need to be able to feed in and guide. So I think it's an area we, I, th I, I feel you should expatiate more and speak more. I think for starters, um, I, I'd already s spoken about the efficiency of process. process. That's the one big thing AI will do. Yeah. If all you do is say you do voiceover, okay, the texture of your voice, your pronunciation, the personality Nality of, of your, your voice, voice, AI can sample. Paul and will deliver it efficiently Multiple in a process options. for a thousand different Same voiceovers voices. going into the future. Yeah. That is productivity for the agency. the agency. The agency will spend less, less money, less time, time, will deliver topmost a quality. Turn around time. But AI does not have a voice of its, its own. own. So maybe what we need to do is renegotiate between the owners of, of the job and you. Here's a sample of my voice. Every time you use it, I get a residual. That's actually a longer term, term. earning prospect than one time for which I get paid. But if you think in a bigger way, Picture. it's going to revolutionize advertising. Mm -hmm. I, I, or brand communication. communication. Um, all the stuff we used to take a lot of time to do, like even just looking at reference tapes of where something had been done before or not, the algorithm is faster. It's faster. It can deliver us, it can give you back, background. The greatest reward of, of AI is research. There have been lots of conversation around regularizing AI, and um, I just need to take, have your take on that. AI in a country like Nigeria um, needs to be seriously monitored, monitored simply because we have what I would call pre-existing conditions. conditions. Corruption is a pre-existing exactly. condition. <laughs> 419 is a pre-existing condition. Um, um, you know, people, people lying in, you know... Uh, 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 Not even e when even people are used to stealing content and all e of those. E exactly. Piracy, Piracy. Is, is a pre-existing condition. And, and unless we have regulation, AI would simply empower, fast forward, make even uh, five times bigger 
the smaller problems that we, we think we are managing. Can you imagine um, someone doing, you know, stealing identity or, or in the business of misinformation and disinformation, <laughs> ha, you know, using AI? Thank you very much, Mr. Fabian, to bring me once again for your time with us.